Hi, people of God. How are you doing? This is Prophet Misha. I am the founder of MMOC, which is Misha's Ministry of Christ. It's a theological school of prophetic arts and worship. So let me get this straight, everyone. Um, be patient and, you know, bear with me. Gotta put this on here. Sorry. <laughs> okay, hold on. This out. There we go. There we go. So uh, I'm going to get into it um, today. Uh, uh, teaching. It's not really, not really a teaching, but today we're going to be looking at, uh, in scripture, the value of a name. Why is your name so important? Why is it important to know our name? And we're going to be looking at the book of Genesis. And we notice in Genesis, uh, Genesis 17, we notice Abram. Uh, his name is Abram. Okay, uh, we're going to be looking at before God changes Abram's name and Sarah's name. It's very important that we are looking at Abram and Sarai. So this morning, earlier this morning, I woke up and as I was getting ready, I heard the name Sarah in my spirit so loudly. So the Lord, and I say loudly, it sounded like it was on a loudspeaker. And I was looking around like, Holy Spirit, you that's pretty loud. So um, the Lord began to tell me to research it, to look at the names and compare and you know make those comparisons so what i be what i began to do was closely examine uh genesis 17 and we're going to look at sarah and the promise and we're going to look at god changes her name from sarai to sarah mm, 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 mm. praise god praise god hallelujah first and foremost before i get into that message we're going to pray and we're going to uh give honor to to, to the lord god of heaven uh, let's, let me roll this one up right here. Roll this one up. Roll that one down. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We magnify your name. We lift your name up on high. We know that you are God of, of more than enough. You are Alpha and the Omega. You are uh, 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 the God of more than enough. You are El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are awesome God. There's no one like you, Lord. Let us decrease so that we may have an increase of you, God. Use me as I display this message, God, as I speak to your people. Use me, God, for your people for the use of your people and let them hear your word my god and not mine's in the mighty name of jesus christ amen and amen so i'm going to get into genesis 17 and 15 so it says that god also said to abraham if you have your bibles go ahead and turn to genesis 17 so we're beginning in Genesis 17 and verse 15. God also said to Abram, as for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. Because if we understand that previously, Abram, uh, uh, well, Sarah could not have children. And we know that Sarah did not bear the firstborn son. It was the servant Hagar that bore the son for Abram. And that son was named Ishmael. So after that son was born, and this is after those accounts. So the Lord continues to say in verse 16, I will bless her. And I and will surely give you a son by her. Now, God is very specific and he's clear on what he is doing and what he's about to do. So not only is God giving a clear uh, in, in, in instruction of what his intention and his will, but God is he's, he's instructing Abram and he's telling him what he's about to do. Praise God of heaven and earth. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of all nations or the mother of nations. 
kings of peoples will come from her. My God. So the importance of a name. Now let's, let's look at something. The name Sarai. It means my lady or princess. You see in this particular verse of scripture, God changed her name. What is the importance of God giving you a name? When your parents decide on a name, that bears so much importance, so much significance. Your name, it carries weight in spirit and it also carries weight in the natural. That's why it's very important that we understand our identity in Christ and what is and who we are, our name in the spirit and our name in the natural. It carries weight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, for one, we no longer remember the former things. So when God changes your name, sometimes for you, it doesn't have to be a physical name change that you're going and actually on a birth certificate and changing your name. It's a spiritual, uh, it's a spiritual, um, significance. It's, it's a spiritual act. It's a prophetic act that the Holy Ghost does in your life when he transforms you and he remakes you. Uh, so, well, for one, we no longer remember the former things, right? So the Bible states, even in the New Testament, that as we are baptized with Christ, we become new creatures in Christ. So, so, so many times the Lord says to us, to remember not the former things, right? We don't, we're not supposed to remember the former things. Let me roll down this window. So Sarah was the only woman in scripture that was given a new name. Did you know that? That Sarah was the only woman in scripture that was given a new name by God. Praise the Lord. Her name is mentioned more times in the Bible than the Virgin Mary, more times. Sarah is the mother of many nations. That's what that name implies. The spiritual significance of that name, the spiritual significance of a name. Before I go any further, I wanna give some insight on my book that I wrote and I told the readers about my name. Many people understand that I was not always a Christian. I was born into the religion of Muslim. I was a Muslim, okay? My grandfather is from India, Bengal, India. So that being said, he brought that tradition into America and from him, everyone was a Muslim. So when I came into this world, I came into this world, blessings man of God, Kenneth, when I came into this world, I came into this world as Miss Ba. I had a name. Actually, I had two names. My name, my name was Miss Ba. That's what my name was in Arabic. So Miss Ba in Arabic, it's a unisex name and it could be for boys or it could be for girls. And this name means, uh, it means light. It means light. So this name means light. But understand that when I came into this world, the reason why I say I had two names, because there was a mistake at the hospital. And that mistake was they supposed to what there was supposed to be Mispa written on the birth certificate. However, the name was Misha that was written instead of Mispa on the birth certificate. You see, God was uh, uh, there was a spiritual battle for my life at the birthing time of when I was brought into this world. There was a battle for my life and it's not because I'm special, but there's a spiritual significance. Well, I am special. Let's just say that. <laughs> Praise God. We all are special, but I'm using this as an example and a template because God has done something in my life that literally trans it literally changed the whole uh, uh, um, perspective of me becoming a Christian. When I became and been filled with the Holy Spirit, 
I accepted the name Misha. Now the name Misha, it is not an American name. It means God-like. Oh my God. It means God-like. So to go from light and going to God-like, so these two names have such a powerful significance because it was my identity as a Muslim, my identity as an unbeliever, my identity before I knew Christ. And then when I accepted Jesus Christ, when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized with speaking in tongues, God gave me a new name. I accepted that name. I pray to the Lord that you're hearing me. So let me continue. I had to put that in. The Holy Spirit wanted me to add that in. So Genesis 17 and 16. And it says, I will bless her and give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly. And she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. What happens when God changes your name? Isaiah 62 and 2. It states it very clearly. That the nations will see your righteousness. World leaders will be blinded by your glory. And you will be given a new name. So verse 3 says you will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand. So when the Lord gives you a new name. When he changes your identity in the spirit. He changes it in the natural. And when that happens, the significance it takes on in the natural is that world leaders will be blinded by your glory. It's the glory of God that will manifest on your life. It's the glory of God in his splendor. The Bible says that he, uh, he will have a crown of splendor. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hands. Hey, good afternoon, woman of God. So let's, so, so let's continue. That's amazing. The significance of your name. There is power in a name. Let's look at Jesus. There is power in just saying his name. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ. It says in the Bible that when you call on the name of Jesus, you will be saved. The moment a believer accepts, the moment someone accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they confess him, mando rabakaya, when they confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior, he comes into their life to perform a transformation, masute kaya rabasa, and he gives you a new name, a new identity, and this identity is only established in Christ. It's not established anywhere else. It's not found anywhere else. It's found in Christ Jesus. I, you know, just being a prophet is, is not, it's not enough to just be a prophet. It's not enough to just be prophetic. It's not enough to just have gifts. It's not enough. Our identity, who we are, Masute Rakata, is established in Christ first. There's power in the name of just saying the name of Jesus. The Bible says that every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus. Every knee, not some knees, but every knee. That means every false God and every false idol bow to the name, to the power, to the glory, to the honor of Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Messiah, who died on the cross for our sins. I cannot tell you enough about the glory of God, the honor, what he does when he transforms you. And also I hear the Lord, there's something, hap something happens when you accept a call on your life. There's something that happens and transforms in the spirit realm that when you accept God calling you, arabakaya. So say for instance, if you're called to the office of the prophet, arakande, rukonde. So, so, so for seasons, God, what he does, he, he, he impressions your heart. He speaks to your heart. He ministers to you about this call on your life. And you may doubt it in the back of your mind. You may refuse it. 
in the back of your mind, but the moment you take and you say, I am a prophet of God, I am an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the moment you accept him, the moment you accept that call, something happens in the spirit realm and demons become frustrated and hell knows your name. Then the then God he sends a uh uh um uh, he sends a clarion call <laughs> so we go to we you know he calls us to prayer but more importantly God sends a commission for you for your name in the earth he manifests he manifests your name so that people know your name in the earth heaven knows your name but more importantly than heaven knowing your name and people knowing your name in the earth hell knows your name. Mm. And I hear the Lord say that you are called by name. My God. Let me just pause there. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. I actually have more scripture to read. But God is just wanting. I, I, I had to speak that. Uh, that word was actually for someone that I was uh, speaking to. And uh, let me go on to go into Genesis 18. So I'm not reading from the King James Version, if uh, people haven't realized, but I'm reading for the New in International Version. Uh, so let's go on to verse 18. And it says uh, 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 that when this is when the three visitors came to Abraham. So in verse 18, it says 18 and 9. Let me begin there. 18 and 9. It says, where is your wife? Sarah. So the Lord is inquiring of her. He's inquiring of her and he's asking, where is she? He's asking, the Lord is asking the husband. You see, three, the number three in the Bible represents Christ. It represents the, the Holy Spirit. It represents the Holy Trinity, right? The Father, Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. Three represents Christ Jesus. The three visitors came to the house of Abraham. Came to the house of Abraham and was asking, where is your wife? And he said, she's in a tent. It's over there. And then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son so god decreed it and you've got to understand the power of god's word when he speaks life happens he commands he commanded the whole universe he commanded the, the creation with the power of his word that's why our the power of our tongue is so important we've got to speak out that thing we've got to say it we've got to accept jesus christ with our mouth we got to open our mouth and physically say it don't just say mm -hmm, i accept jesus christ and my lord and Savior in your head no you say it you don't just accept the call of of god on your life oh i'm a prophet oh mm -hmm, say it in my head no you've got to say it you've got to call that thing forth you've got to you got to just pull on that if god is calling you to it you've got to pull it you've got to pull on that anointing you've got to pull it down your faith pulls it it brings it into manifestation holy oh jesus 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 <laughs> praise god praise god praise god and then it says now sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent and this is still, this is still uh, uh, verses 18 and 10. I'm at 18 and 10 now. Let me move this. So this is verse 18 and 10 now. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old. And Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Mm. Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought. After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah just laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? And then the Lord goes on to say, is there anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. 
Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But the Lord already heard what she said. God already said, uh, you did laugh. So let me just tell you something. Even though God knows our heart, he knows our thoughts. Even though God's spirit searches our, our intentions and he knows our thoughts, he tries our thoughts, we, you know, he already knows them, but God wants you to agree with him. He wants you to agree with that thing that he's decreeing over your life. And I know that sometimes because of the trials that we go through in our life, it may seem like in the natural that nothing's happening. It may seem like in the natural that nothing's manifesting. It may seem like in the natural that it's too late it may seem like in the natural it's too late i've waited too long time has already escaped me i'm already over with i can't give birth anymore and this is a spiritual significance people of god this is a significance that you giving birth to what god has called you to do businesses creations uh ministries uh even even babies in the natural god has done it so many times the glory of god manifests and he has done this so many times the glory of god when he manifests in your life agree agree and there's a power in agreement but sarah was afraid she was afraid and she didn't know that even God spoke that word over her life. He, number one, he changed her name first and foremost. First, he changed her name. And then after he changed her name, he decreed over her life that her, that she will give birth to many nations. She will be the mother of many nations. And not only did he just do that, he decreed a son will come from her and Abraham in their old age. And he said, at this, by this time next year, you will give birth to a son by this time next year. So, so the power of God's word over your life, the power of God, his word at work in your life. Mm, 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 mm. I give God all the glory. I give God all the honor. Some, sometimes we think that it's too late. Sometimes we think that you know, we can't make up for the time that we've lost. But God has a way of reconstructing our life to add in what he's needed to do in our life, to add in, to, to, to add in uh, uh, the places that we need to go. He will put in place the right people. And what God does, he prepares us for the blessing. He doesn't prepare the blessing for us. The blessing's already ready for us. It's, it's there. See, you got to understand that God knows our name. He knows the number of hairs on our head. He knows our rising. He knows when we're going to sleep. He knows who we are. He knows us by name, calls us by name. He knows exactly who you are in the spirit. So there's no way of confusing who you are. There's no way. And I want to give God the glory and the thanks and the power and the honor. And I'm about to pray for you. We just thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that your manifestation is taking place in our life. That you, God, have called us by name. You've called us out of darkness. You've called us out. You've called us out, God. We thank you, Lord, that you've called us out, God. That you've called us by name. That you, God, have the power to reset us. Uh, you have the power to restore us, God. You have the power to, to cause recompense. Great recompense to fall upon our life. You have the power to perform your deliverance in our life, your healing God. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. It doesn't matter how far, how far, how far you are today it doesn't matter we just thank you lord we give you honor and glory we thank you lord 
that you have changed our name, not just in the natural, but in the spirit realm, God. We thank you that you are calling us by a new name today, that our name, that we will be sought out. You know what happens when you begin to uh, uh, give God honor in your life? God begins to honor you. When you honor the Lord, he honors you. It says there in the Bible that God will honor you with long life. When you run the way of the Lord, God honors you. When you stay right there in the place of obedience, God begins to honor you. He begins to exalt you. He begins to lift you up. We thank you, Lord, for your honor. We thank you, Lord, because we honor you today, God. We give you honor. We give you praise, God. We give you glory. We've got to understand that it's not about us. It is about God. It is all about him. If he be lifted up, he will draw all men. The Bible says that he will make us fishers of men. There's a power in the evangelist. I have an evangelist on right now. Asute irakande rababasaya rabanshunde rakande rababasundo lenda rakande rababasundo okobaha there's an evangelist that's on Asute rakande rababasunde ila aya namasundo the lord says he got his eye on you ando rakande irekande musunde irahandile inko rabashanda he's still training you and processing you andele isude irakande a mundele arosonde ikarababashata rendele babasute hallelujah god for your glory and we thank you for the office of the evangelist God. We thank you for the office, the power of the evangelist God that draws men. There's an anointing on the evangelist to draw men. Unlike any other office. There is a power on the office of the evangelist to draw men. There's a code that God has put right there inside of you. That is a uh, uh, um that is a uh, uh, specific to how you relate to every person that you encounter. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're from uh, another country. You come into America or you're going to another country. It doesn't matter. There is a power and the anointing upon the office of an evangelist. That has the power to, to, to draw different gifts different different people different anointings it's kind of like an apostolic evangelist so so right now God we just thank you for the office of the evangelist I don't know who it's for but I thank you Lord for that evangelist God I thank you for their life I thank you for his life and I see a slash teaching and I thank you, Lord God, Ebandu, for the instruction in the spirit realm. I thank you, Lord, for the instruction that you're giving the evangelist right now in this hour. And I speak to every single evangelist, God, who knows their name, who knows you by name, who 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 who, who know their name, God. Because you can't be an evangelist if you're not accepting the call of the evangelist. God could be calling 
calling you. God could be uh, 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 just impressioning your heart, just telling you, you are, you are, you are, but this is your moment. This is your confirmation. This is your way of saying, yes, you are an evangelist, says the Lord. Get in position. Get in position. Get in position. You have honored me, says the Lord. You have honored honored me and they ah 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 now it's time for me to honor you ah irekando rabasaya thank you lord rababan siki orokonde rabasaya we thank you god we thank you, Lord. And I want to speak to the prophet because there's something about the office of the prophet that undergoes such a harsh pressure of rejection. There's such, there's such a, there's such a, 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 a who that the enemy wants to do when he knows that a prophet is born. Huh. <laughs> when the enemy knows that a prophet's born into the earth, he sends every attack and onslaught of demonic attack that he possibly can. And one thing that plagues prophet so much is is rejection. One thing because you know why they're so peculiar. They're so overlooked oftentimes because of their peculiarity. They're so overlooked. But God does this for a reason. You have to understand God does these things for a reason. And he allows. God says to the prophet right now, I'm fanning your flame. I'm fanning your flame. I'm awakening you. Even the older prophets that think that, oh, it's not my time. I'm too late. No, no, this word is not for me. The Lord says. Arise and shine. Usande Rabakaya. Change your shoes, which is your spiritual walk. Kande. Change your shoes and put on the shoes, the peace that I have given you. The 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 walking in that mantle that I've given you. Know this is your time. Prophet, this is your time, Prophet. This is your time. I keep saying it because there's an emphasis right there in the spirit that God wants you to know, uh, 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 older prophets, that it's your time. Don't, just like Sarah, don't think that this is, it, it, you're too late. Don't think you can't uh, uh, give birth to anything in the earth any longer. But God has special plans for you. His hand is not only upon you, but it's on that thing that he's told you to give birth to. Yes, it's time. This is your time to give birth to that ministry ministry, that extra ministry, and I see you in administration. I see you right there in organization. I see you right there in management. The Lord says that he is calling you into this place of, of, of higher organization. And I just fan your flame. I fan it, fan it, fan it in the name of Jesus. And that word was for someone right there. And there's such a power in knowing who you are uh, in Christ, even knowing uh, that you are a prophet, even knowing that you are an evangelist, even knowing that you're a teacher, even knowing uh, that God has released a mantle of multiplicity and sometimes Sometimes people, uh, when they are, huh, how should I say this? When, <laughs> how should I say this? People will misidentify you and it's not on purpose. It's by accident. And sometimes you have a mantle of multiplicity and sometimes you can be identified in one season as a teacher when God is truly grooming you and calling you to be an evangelist. Or you could be a prophet and God has been grooming you and teaching you. And in one season, you may have looked like a teacher, uh, uh, just for instance. But there's a mantle of multiplicity. And as the Bible says in Corinthians, that there's a diversity of gifts, a diversity of operations. 
And that sometimes in the natural, it doesn't just look like uh, on the surface. We've, that's why we have to be in tune in the spirit. We have to know the Father's voice and, and his uh, leading uh, for ourselves and know what and who God has truly called us. And that's why we have to stand in the right place. We have to stand in the right position because if you're out of position, you know what happens. You're out of position. You can't hear the Lord. You're out of position. You don't know your name. You're out of position. You don't know your instructions and your orders. You don't know what you're supposed to do. Then you're going through life trying to figure out what to do, where you're going, who you are. So in, in the spirit, I call forth proper order. I call forth proper management that you will go forth in your right place. From this hour moving forward, you will be in the right place. I put you back into alignment. Things have been out of order in your life. I call forth God's perfect order. I call forth God's perfect organization. I call forth God's perfect administration in your life. And I release a fresh fire over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release the fresh fire so that you prophesy with fire. You preach with fire. Fire evangelists. Fire prophets. Fire Fire believers. Let us speak boldly. In the name of Jesus, let us come boldly to the throne of God. Uh, let us know who we are as we approach God. We got to know our authority in Christ. We've got to know who we are. So when Satan comes against us, we speak back the word to Satan. We tell him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't really trying to go into all of this, but you know, the Holy Spirit, we just allow the Lord to move as he wishes and as he pleases. And we just give God all the glory. I give God all the praise uh, because, like I said, if he be lifted up, then he will draw men. He will draw all men. And we just allow God to, to, we are just the vessel and the Lord, uh, if we submit ourselves, he will use us to the capacity uh, or to the measure of our faith. But I praise God for each and every person that watch. Uh, I am looking for partners. And if you felt that this was a word for you, I encourage you to sow into this word because this is a word of the Lord. Sow into this word. Put your uh, a heart and your trust into what God has said. And you know your finances is, is close to your heart. <laughs> your finances is close to your heart. So put your money where your heart is. And so into this word, if you, and, and I know that some of you are on, so I know it's about maybe two or three people that feel that they were led to, to this word was led uh, for them. So sow into this word. I encourage you to sow, uh, sow your best seed of fifty dollars into this word. And if you can't sow uh, fifty, then sow your best. Sow anything that the Lord puts on your heart. But I just heard the word, the the, the number fifty uh, for those who are looking uh, to sow uh, into this word. I praise God for you. And uh, also want to tell you about my uh, premier prophetic workshop that I have doing that I am doing right now. Well. I, I am doing a premier prophetic workshop. It will be taking place March the 3rd, this Saturday, March 3rd. So if you want to register, go ahead. There's no registration fee. You just go ahead and pay for the, uh, uh, the three month workshop or choose a one month workshop. And uh, that will depend on you. However, the workshop is uh, uh, supposed to be drawn out over the course of three months as an intensive workshop in which I will be praying and prophesying over you, giving you dream equipping, visions and numbers and trances. You will get an in-depth um, understanding of uh, that dimension in the spirit. So I bless each and every one of you and I encourage you to uh, sow those who, who know that they are supposed to. Uh, praise God, hallelujah. And um, I will be on next Thursday at two o'clock. Praise God for you guys. And go ahead and uh, look up, go to my website 
and go to www.schoolofpropheticarts.org and uh, slash events and you can uh, sign up for the premier prophetic workshop which is going on uh, this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 it will be online I'll add you to my private group uh, my private group of dreamers and the group is on Facebook and it's called the dreamers advantage it is a closed group only for those who sign up to the premier prophetic workshop um, it will be a powerful time uh, of 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 intensive training and equipping um so we just praise god we praise god for that um for the lord putting that in place so all right guys blessings i have to go you all be be wonderful in the lord and i just speak blessings over you in jesus mighty name bye bye